Hi, this is Matt at AppWorks, and today's video is going to be how container fields work in FileMaker, and specifically uh, how they work with external storage. So I have a sample database of 400 or so images here that I've downloaded from unsplash.com, and you can see some information about the image. So some of them are a couple thousand pixels wide, and then some of them at the end are a little bit bigger than that. Um, and then it tells me the size of the image. So you can see some of the larger ones, I get a little spinning beach ball because it takes a while to load. So right now, all of these images are stored in FileMaker. So here's what it would look like if I look at the database. There, um, the image field is in the database and it just says container and it doesn't have any information on the options. And then I also have the FileMaker server loaded for this file, so I can see the total size of my database is 485 megs. And I have the external uh, container folder that we're going to be playing with in a minute, which right now is empty. So how do I convert these to be external storage? And what are the options that you get? OK, so for one, if you go back to the graph, uh, Manage Database, on the image folder, or on the image field, you can just change its storage to external, and then you get two options, secure and open. Um, secure storage uh, scares me a little bit because it puts everything kind of in, a, in an encrypted folder. It's a very good way to do it if you really, really need encrypted data, but then there's kind of a magic invisible link between what FileMaker stores and what the database stores and how that works. So that'll be part two of the video. We'll be converting to secure storage and what that looks like on the server. For part one, we're going to use open storage. And the default structure um, puts everything into a folder where all the fields, all the, um, the images just go kind of loose into one folder. And let's take a look at what that looks like so we can kind of see what happens. So I'm just going to click Transfer. So this box comes up, and what's going to now happen is FileMaker is going to transfer all of the images out of my database and onto the external folder on the server. So we'll actually be able to watch the server as it moves these images out. So if I bring the server up while that's happening, the database size won't change yet until I close the file, but the image test folder is now getting a bunch of, uh, uh, the actual images are flowing into this folder. So as I scroll through, I can see hundreds of images appearing. There's the count of them right there. So in not very long, that's going to finish. It's going to get all the way up to my 439 images. I don't particularly like this structure, though, because if you've got two images with the same name, like untitled or you know random image one, then um, FileMaker will actually handle it. It will rename the two, because you can't have two files with the same name in a folder. But it will do it in such a way that you don't really get to manage, and you can't really tell which image belongs to which record in your database. So here's how I recommend doing it. As soon as this finishes in a few seconds here, we'll get a summary that tells me how many um, uh, transfers worked and if there was any errors. And it also makes a log file of the whole thing. So I'm just going to go ahead and click OK. And now if I go to my server, I'll notice that my database file is still really large. Um, but I want to do one other thing, too, while I'm here before I do this other test. I'm going to, on my FileMaker server admin console, I'm going to close the database. And I'm going to... Um, close it on the server, which will take a little bit because what FileMaker is going to now do, FileMaker server, look at that, it just took a fraction of a second. When it closed the file, it saved it, and now none of the images are in the database. So that's incredibly smaller. And I'm going to open it again for hosting, and the file doesn't change. So now all the images have been moved out of the database and into this folder. Okay, so now I'm going to log back into that file on my server. And here we go, it looks exactly the same as it did. And flipping through the images is now going to actually be a little bit faster because FileMaker, I think, performed a little bit better with external containers than it does with internal. OK, part two. Let's talk about what it takes to move these to a, a, a folder structure that I think makes more sense. So here's how we do that. On the image field, when it says external, uh, I'm just going to have it go into a, a folder called images and then with a slash. And then rather than just having it going, going into a loose folder altogether, I'm going to 
um, concatenate the ID. In this case, that's just a UUID field for the table. And then add one more slash at the end. So uh, the structure on the, on the server will look like this. This will do that same process. By the way, this, this process of moving the containers is actually kind of magically interruptible and resumable. So if you've got a really, really large set, it's possible to actually stop this. I'm not going to do that as part of this demo. But here's what's happening on the server now. If I look at the server, it's going to be structuring all of these uh, images. And yeah, so now in my image test folder, I get a folder called images. And in there, I get one folder with each UUID. So I didn't make these serial numbers, but I made them UUIDs. And inside that is one file. Um, so I find that much easier to manage. Uh, it's just a lot uh, more safe to me because I can easily go find that record. I can look into my database and find the ID, and I can go find the image with that ID and, and kind of manage it and back it up and deal with it separately. And then here's my summary telling me my transfer is good. Okay, thanks for watching part one. Part two is we're going to look at secure storage.